venture. You made it back to Candlekeep and checked in. Then uh, had a good bath, something good to eat. And all uh, went down and sat down at uh, what has become your normal table in the stacks, in the library stacks. And as you're sitting there, uh, you have a chance to talk amongst yourselves. Why can't we just find normal books? I don't know. That wouldn't be any fun. It would be educational. Where's Hunk? I haven't seen him in a bit. Uh, he's <laughs> off eating a sandwich in the middle of the room. That looks like one of your sandwiches. Ah, uh, yes, one of the haste carts. Are sure, you starting sure. to sell them over here too now? I'm just going to grab a cup and throw it. Whoa. Dude, is that a cup, dude? Why'd you throw that at me, dude? That is my invention. Give me credit. Whoa, so what's up like? Are you guys in the book club now, or what? I mean, I've always been in the book club. I just love books, and, you know, I'm reading this one book right here that's really interesting about magic. Whoa, dude. Magic? Like my abs, dude? Sure. Yeah. Like your abs. Sweet, dude. Tell me all about it, bro. Well, I mean, it's a little bit about Mistra and, you know, how magic all came about and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so that's all, you know, that's why I'm here. I to find out about magic. Whoa. Sweet, dude. Let me know if you find anything about me, though. I'll do my best. I have my own magic book. Speaking of which, um, I need to dude. copy a spell into it. I think. Oh. Because I have a scroll of mage armor now. Yeah. So I'll just start doing that at the table. How long is that going to take you? <laughs> it's like, is uh, it a level one spell or what? Yeah. yeah so it's, what, two hours? <laughs> Every time I, uh, Layla would have found that she can actually, uh, summon a familiar, so she'll go ahead and do that now. And I've already subtracted the coin for that, so it's good to go. Okay. You could have done that the whole time? I mean, you could have done it too, so <laughs> if you're going to take two hours now, I'll just take the one hour. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so after an hour, uh, you finally manage to get your spell cast. The air seems to condense before you before there's a popping noise and a little pixie is suddenly there. What does this pixie look like? Oh man, I haven't even thought that far. <laughs> uh, in, uh, it's, a, it's a male. Uh, he has um, and it's a sprite, so he's got uh, like uh, dragonfly wings. Um, he's kind of dressed in uh, kind of green leafery type stuff, um, you know, for camouflage and whatnot. He's got a bow. Uh, yeah. And we'll just go with blondish hair. Sounds like a male Tinkerbell. Uh, basically, I guess so, yeah. <laughs> there you go. I'm, I'm thinking more camouflage than just, you know... <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it, I, I'm go, I'm going with male Tinkerbell. It's more fun. There you go, Jingling. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, the the creature looks around at the rest of the party, and then looks towards you, questioningly. Oh my goodness! It worked. I did it. Whoa! This book is awesome. 
Bro, you just like made a thing out of nothing, dude. Well, I mean, not exactly, but I mean, kind of, yeah. Looks like it, huh? I'm going to call you Yingling? And the, the creature uh, looks at you, uh, cocks his head to one side, and then speaks. And it says, Master? But everybody else just hears, like, musical tinkling bells. I don't speak <laughs> Sylvan. It's not primordial, right? No, it's, it's Sylvan. It's Sylvan. Dang. So, Sylvan. Now I have a picture of what Sylvan t t uh, sounds like. Tinkling noises. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> it's canon. <laughs> In this campaign, such as it is. <laughs> okay. I was like, oh my goodness, I mean, you could talk. I didn't know you could talk. That's really awesome. Hey, who are you? Where do you, where do you come from? And tinkle, 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 I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we don't need to RP that. <laughs> the, the, the creature uh, uh, spills its guts to you uh, about you its, its homeland, which uh, you somewhat understand, but, uh, you know, you've been gone for a while from anything like that, so. Are you speaking in Sylvan as well? Or? Oh, yeah, I, I speak Sylvan. Even well, if I didn't, indeed. I could still understand because... Uh, I, because of the spell, it allows for telepathic communication. Well, Araya, dude, they're just like singing at each other, bro. Yeah. Uh, uh, I would imagine Layla would be basically tiring him out. Because sprites don't tend to be as bubbly. <laughs> I like the idea movie. that it's just like a grumpy sprite. <laughs> <laughs> He's like unpaid, <laughs> getting forced to work for you. Oh, yeah, exactly. unpaid in turn, right? <laughs> like, yes, master. Nice. I guess I'll go clean out your backpack. Uh, by the way, uh, we tend to share gifts and memes and stuff like that while we're playing in and one of the chat channels in this case would be the one shot channel up above so feel free to laugh at those i see that now <laughs> <laughs> all right um all right so another hour goes past and you finish copying your spell to your spell book did he, could he actually concentrate that whole time? I think it took him four uh, hours. I've gotten good at ignoring you. <laughs> <laughs> Both in and out of game. All right. <laughs> but what about Hunk, though? Uh, he tries not to think about Hunk. <laughs> and all the problems you cause. All right. I imagine that while you were summoning and I was writing, Hunk is just sitting there flexing. Eating his sandwich in front of you. Wait, well, dude, I don't flex without a reason, bro. That's not a sandwich, right. that is a haste cart. Yeah. For Will's benefit, oh. since he hasn't heard about that. Uh, I invented sandwiches and it's because not my true. name is a sandwich. Sandwiches have cards. existed for a millennia. <laughs> He's lying. <laughs> All right. Um. Well, the the other members of your party are are actually there with you. So Falcon and Paul are both sitting there, uh, studiously being quiet. Uh, as Falcon is glaring off to one side, and wait, Paul. Wait. It seems to be cleaning his fingernails. Where's Where's Ubrak's attack? Ubrak is off doing something else, and has been for uh, quite some time. All right, fair enough. I can tell you straight up that Basilius isn't around anymore. No, he wandered off somewhere too. You haven't seen him. He went back to his underwater family. Okay. Well, I don't think uh, Trevor's coming back either, so Ubrak probably <laughs> watered off somewhere too. So He's dead. They're all dead. Yeah, they're dead. 
All right. So, so, like, you know how to punch things, too? And I'll just talk to Paul about being a monk. <laughs> oh, God. That conversation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Your abs, dude. Your abs are so good. Check out these guns. I don't know how that conversation goes. Honestly, I don't I can't, remember I can't, Paul. I can't. I don't do remember Paul. Paul being that. Uh, he was more shy, wasn't he? I don't know. That's just that uh, he was only in the first cam, the first session campaign. He was in so. like half of the first session. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, he has a conversation <laughs> with you in Paul Crothers' fashion. I just want him around in case, uh, you know, Johnny wants to play next time we play. So. <clears throat> and, of course, Falcon is doing his normal thing. Sulking. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he made a basic rogue, and now it's a basic rogue. <laughs> All right. As you guys are sitting there, uh, uh, discussing things, uh, checking out whatever, uh, you suddenly hear a voice uh, coming from the direction of the uh, the hall in front of you, where people have been walking past. As a uh, young male human scribe walks around the corner, he goes. Ah! Ah! There you are! There you are! And he starts walking your direction, clips the corner of a bookcase, which wobbles back and forth a little bit, but manages to stay up, and walks straight up to your table. Knew I'd find you! Knew it! God said you'd return, and they were right! Here you are! The scribe pulls out a, bra a uh, blackened, scarred book. It looks like... It's been burnt on the outside. There are scratches and uh, all kinds of damage to the wooden um, cover of this book. It's not very big. It's pretty thin. Uh, he holds it up over his head, over his head, and slams it down on the table in front of you. And here is something for you: the Book of Ravens. Yes. A strange tale lies within and without. The scribe shows the scarred wooden planks that serve as a cover for the book and then flips it open to a page that appears to be marked with a separate piece of paper. Look! Look there! I found that in this book. It wasn't there when the book arrived. No, it wasn't. But now it is. How could that be? It's a mystery, isn't it? One for your hmm. team to solve, I think. Yes, I do. The scribe falls silent, except for the sound of him gasping for air from his sudden tirade. He stops. Pant he stands panting and looking at the party anxiously. Can I take an insight check to see if this guy's on drugs? Sure. Twenty-two. You notice the telltale signs of about 15 caffeine patches. No, I'm just kidding. He does seem to be rather worked up and um, I'd like possibly uh, influenced by something. Hmm. Lou, about... dude. You just, like, found that in there, bro? Yes, I did. I said I did, didn't I? Yes, I did. There it is. Whoa. Pretty rad, dude. So, hmm. is this thing gonna attack us too? I mean, it feels like a setup. Alright, so here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna spend 10 minutes. I'm gonna ritual cast identify on this book. And this here is the book shown to your journals. Alright. I'm going to mage hand flip open the, the cover so I can see the writing. Well, like I said, it's already open, and oh. it's open to somewhere in the middle, and there is a piece of paper that is not attached to the book uh, that's shoved between the pages there. It's Can we read it? Colorful. What, it's colorful. What, what's, it, uh, what's the language? Um, the language is common on the piece of paper, and it's got several drawings of various different things. 
look at it, <laughs> looking at it, you notice that it appears to be a map. Why don't you just detect magic in the book? We don't even know if it's magical. So I can not spend a spell slot? What are you identifying? Well, I detect magic is also written fast. No. Identify still tells me whatever spells are affecting the item and what they are. Um, so the pages of the book, are there, what, what's the writing in on that as well? The, the pages of the book are in common. Okay. All right. I was going to cast comprehend languages otherwise. So thank no, you. It's all in common for a Did change. Did you find any unusual magical things with the book? 10 minutes pass as you ritually cast the spell where everybody's watching <laughs> you cast this ever, ever. spell and waiting, and then the spell goes off, and you suddenly realize there's nothing magical about the book or the paper. Well, dude, what'd you find out, bro? Nothing. What? <laughs> nothing. It's just a book. But then again, uh, the last book was just a book. What'd you and think it, it was, kill us. bro? Like, obviously, it's a book, dude. Look at it, dude. Uh, some books are more than books. Some are portals to interdimensional mansions. Some are monsters. The scribe uh, pipes up at that point point. goes, Yes! Yes! Heard you done some of that! That's why I brought this to you! See? It's a mystery! Points at the map. Maybe you can figure it out. It's really... Uh, it's really quite a mystery! Read the book. There, look at the map, and then and a the scribe the steps back. Wait, are you saying that not every book you've ever like gotten has attacked you? Not all of them. Oh, uh, well, that's how it's always yes. been with me. Hmm. Actually, somewhere around here, we have a flail with a book on the end, so you can attack someone else with a book. So you can be the book attacking. I think Ubrak actually has a... Ah, Ubrak. He stole our loot. <laughs> Either that or Vasilius. I don't remember. Either way, it's gone. Well, let's flip through this book. Um, is the map any place we know? The map looks like this. It is now shared to your journals. It depicts what appears to be a town with a name next to it that says which way and a trail past several uh, what appear to be landmarks leading towards uh, some kind of a scorched red worm thing. Uh, you're not really sure what that is. And then beyond it, you see what appears to be a small castle? Ah, hmm. uh, yes. Wood bridge. I know of many wood bridges. <laughs> well, hold on, dude. That's wood bridge, dude. Right? That's wood bridge. Wood bridge. bridge. <laughs> because that's a B and not a yeah. D in bridge. It's a it's a wood bridge, dude. Wood bridge. <laughs> so we spend the next ten minutes discussing wood bridge. <laughs> yeah, apparently so. Oh, dude, I for I didn't even see that bridge, dude. Yeah, bridge. Nice, dude. Wood bridge. Which is the next character I'm gonna make? Um. Hmm. All right, so that's the map. What's the book generally about? Just ravens? Start reading the book. So, as you read the book, uh, you you start at the beginning, I assume? Uh, yeah, it's as good a place as any. S sit on a shoulder and read as well. And it, it appears to be the first-hand account written in common of uh, an author who doesn't use their name, so you're not sure who it is, but uh, the 
she refers to herself in, as uh, as a fe in a female form, so you know it's female. And it starts off with a tale of how she fell off of her horse and broke her leg and, while she, riding in the mountains and was rescued and befriended by um, some travelers who graciously nursed her back to health. The author and her horse traveled with them for three months, during which time the, the author spent most of her time laid up in a covered wagon where she took to writing this book to pass the time. Although there were about a dozen uh, of the uh, people that were in this little covered wagon caravan thing that are described in the tome, only two are mentioned by name. Those are Drasha, which I, I will go ahead and copy and paste these names for you. Who is a teenaged girl? Actually, I'll just get the whole thing. That way, you have a, some kind of a description as well. Uh, a teenage girl who helped apply bandages and poultices to the author's wounded leg. And, I guess so. And oh, sorry, go. Darzen, a one-armed boy with a terrible fear of wolves, who sang beautiful songs to help her take her mind off the pain. Those are the only two named people in the entire book. The book goes on to provide a detailed account of the way of life of these people and an emphasis on their food and music. The overland journey is also discussed, but from the viewpoint of one who spent most of it inside the covered wagon, so not very detailed about the land or anything like that. The author describes rough roads, days of travel through impenetrable mist and thick forests, crackling fires on cold nights, wolves howling in the dead of night, and ravens pecking at the roof of the wagon in the wee hours of the morning. Late in the book, towards the end, the author writes of being able to hobble about on crutches as her leg begins to heal enough, and she describes the cheery mood of her benefactors and the car uh, as the caravan traveled th uh, through some winding mountain roads to the gates of a tall, dark castle. The book ends with a description of the castle's dreadful countenance and abruptly stops on the third to last page, suggesting that the book uh, was um, hastily removed from the author's possession. The last two pages are blank. So, <clears throat> the travelers are mentioned several different times in it, and there's only one time that they're referred to by a name that means anything, and that is as the Vistani, which you may or may not know what that is. I do. Um... The, the book uh, goes on to uh, tell how they are uh, capable of traveling through the Shadowfell without being um, set, beset by the you know, despair that normally hits people going through there. They travel in horse-drawn, barrel-shaped wa wagons and are nomadic. The other thing is that they display their wealth openly, share with others freely, and like singing, dancing, and storytelling. They have large families uh, most of the time, but um, they're very uh, big on enforcing traditions. Um, and preserving their way of life. It hints that they have some kind of a power um, that allows them to see through the mists and travel. 
the way that they do. But it doesn't really come out and explain it because the girl doesn't seem to understand it herself. And the other thing that it says is that they believe that ravens carry the lost souls, or carry lost souls within them, and that they considered extremely bad luck to kill them. Well, that's pretty much the book's entirety. Hmm. So, I'll turn to the scribe who brought us this. Um, so, the mystery you're talking about, trying to figure out who wrote this book. How did you get your hands on it? Well, that's the interesting story, isn't it? Yes, yes. It was left by a raven in the tower. A green-eyed raven. Hmm. Just three days ago. And let me tell you what. This map was not in it then. Has the book left your possession since then? The book was uh, spent about a day being carefully cataloged and read by several people. It's not very long, so it didn't take long. And then it was cataloged and, and put on the in, in the stacks. I was just... Uh, going to read it myself since I didn't have the, the chance earlier and when I opened it up, lo and behold there was the map mm. so somebody must have left it in there who had their hands on it at some point possibly I, I, I do know one other thing that might be helpful the, the map is not very helpful as far as locations, I'm sure you noticed. It's a little vague. Well, I so happen to have read a book that mentioned a town by the name of Witchway. Oh, and which way would it be? Well, it just mentioned it. However, I was discussing it with another scribe, and... Uh, another scribe overheard us, and that scribe, uh, what, what, what was his name? I think it was a scribe. I was I was talking with him. What was his name? You know what? I think it was just a traveler, actually. Well, one or the other. But anyways, he said that he knew where which way was. When was the last time you saw this traveler? I just saw him earlier today. I know right where he is. Oh. And that would be? Uh, the scribe points just vaguely over her direction. He goes, well, it's actually uh, o over in the court of air. He was uh, sitting at one of the outdoor tables. Can you take us to him? Of course, of course. Alright, let's go on an adventure. Falcon, stop glaring. Fal <laughs> Falcon glares at you <laughs> and gets up. And, and Paul is too, as well. Um, the rest of you? Guys, what are you doing? I mean, Layla's still on my shoulder, so she's just kind of coming with me. Along for the ride. Ah, ah, ah. And what about Jingling? Jingling? Uh, yeah, it's like, uh, come on, Jingling. Come on. Jingling lands on his other shoulder. <laughs> oh, one of them's going to tell me to do good things, and the other's going to tell me to do bad things. <laughs> I mean, he's a little bit on the dour side, so I guess he's going to be the bad one. But you're going to hear just tingling, tingling. <laughs> yes, subliminal messages. Right. <laughs> All right. Uh, so you follow the scribe. You follow the scribe out to the court of air. The scribe leads you over to an outdoor, one of the outdoor tables there, where sits an interesting-looking person. Would this person like to describe themselves? 
Uh, Will, that is your cue to describe your character. As a you know, Born Ranger, obviously, uh, we'll go with 30 years of age, uh, slender, kind of battle worn, scars. Okay, so the scribe approaches you, uh, Thrax, and says, Thrax, you're still here! Good! Good! Yes, you caught me before I was about to leave. Well, uh... uh are, you the, are you the one that knows about which way? Which way would you like to know which way? Exactly. Whoa, that's pretty deep, dude. And I'll just show him the map. So the the actual layout looks a little familiar to you since you've been there. I know the general vicinity of this area, and I can probably take you to that location. Hmm. How far is it? Let's see if Will remembers anything I told him. <laughs> Would you like to me, me to clue you in, Will? Yeah, I don't quite remember that much. <laughs> and, you know, I'm not surprised. Um, so, uh, it lies to the south of Candlekeep near the mountains. It's it, just a short trek south, close to the mountain range. Well, not really a short trek. It's a ways, but yeah. It's, you know, in the grand scheme of the world, it's not very far. Is it a dangerous journey? Do we have to protect ourselves? Do we need to have somebody here to help us get there? Woody, I'm all the protection you need. Don't even oh, worry. You are, you it. are. I, I go up and pat him on the shoulder. Don't worry, dude. I got you. Thanks, dude. Yeah, man. Uh, it is probably about 35 miles. Will? It's about 35 miles. About 35 miles. Okay, about 35 miles. Uh, and when you saw the place, it was really dilapidated. Like, no... The last time I saw this place, it was crumbling to the ground, houses burning. Well, Looks like nobody's been there for a while. Hmm. How old does this book seem to be? The book is hard to tell how old it is. Uh, go ahead and make an investigation check. So this book looks like it's been charred. Did this come from one of the houses that was burning? 13. I mean, yeah, it, you, you're not sure. It could be that it is really old, or it could have just been subjected to a lot of different, uh, you know, things. It's, it looks like something has, you know, almost viciously attacked the uh, outside of it. It's got gouges in it in the wood where something relatively sharp has repeatedly hit it. The scribe speaks up at this point and goes, Well, if, if you're headed south, uh, I, I might be able to help you. Uh, do you have horses? Uh, we do not. I've never ridden a horse. Do they let you do that? Uh, yes, they do. I could probably rent one from the keep. 
Well, you don't need to do that. Uh, uh, we've got this, uh, this invention that we were wanting to test anyways. Uh, I would probably let you borrow it and, and take it on a test run. It's not that far. It'd be about right for a test run. Uh, has anyone tested this before? Sure, sure. You know, short distances. This would be a little longer. Hmm. Let's take a look at it. Sure. He leads you over uh, off to the other side of the court of air where you, you, you hear... Uh, as you get closer, you hear whistles and clangs and and strange noises. And you see a crowd of people, and as they part, as you press through, you see what appears to be a, a metal and wood contraption, roughly in the shape of a large uh, four-wheeled uh, wagon. It... Uh, has no no place to hook horses up to it and it's, it's belching steam from a couple of different locations on it oh. can i inspect it for general safety would you have the slightest clue how to do that oh probably not <laughs> does it have knives sticking out of it no, I don't know. <laughs> no it doesn't I mean, you know, not knives. Mm. Well, it's got plenty of room for everybody to sit on it. And some strange contraptions and stuff up towards the front that you're not sure what they do. The scribe goes, I could, I could drive this and take you all there. And test it along the way. If you're willing to also risk your life on this death trap. It's not a death trap. Granted, it's a it's a bit mysterious what runs this machine, but you know, it should get us there. Well, what do you guys think? I'm always up for something new. This is very weird and interesting. All right. I guess we're taking this. Yes, uh, almost feel like, feels like we should name it, doesn't it? Hmm. I don't know. Uh, maybe you, you uh, folks, could help us name this mysterious machine. Death trap. I don't know. It makes this weird chitty chitty bang bang kind of noise. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> That's a reference Xander won't get. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure he hasn't seen Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. The older girls did, but I don't think he ever did. Alright. So, uh, the scribe climbs up into the front of it and says, load up if you're ready. Take a deep breath and then get up on it. Guess what, guys? They added a feature where you can actually put stuff in your backpack on the and Beyond. Really? So now you can know if your backpack is holding 30 pounds or not. Nice. Nice. I prefer to think my backpack just holds whatever I have an infinite amount. You would, you would. <laughs> Now they have to do figure out, you know, space so that you can have a difference between 30 pounds of feathers and 30 pounds of lead. Nope. Uh, okay, I'll do that next. <laughs> <laughs> so, you load up in the cart. Uh, the scribe looks over at Thrax and says, You too, you have to come. I don't know the way. All right, I will get on and lead you to this destination. All right, let's go. And uh, he presses some knobs and turns himself, and the thing kind of jerks into motion, squealing and making a bunch of noise to begin with, but slowly starts to move faster. And, and out the front gates, 
and uh, onto the road down from the keep where it meets a junction and he turns south. Talking about the machine the entire way. I'm going to see if I can understand the workings of this machine from what he's talking about. How fast is this thing going? Out of curiosity. Um, about the this, this the speed of a walking horse most of the time. Hey, that's white knuckle pace. Yeah, it's it's not real fast. It's faster than a walk, and you don't have to walk. That's you know. Okay, so probably 40 feet. I just wonder if Layla, when she lets go, does she get left behind? I mean, you you definitely have to fly to catch up, you know, put some effort into it. Okay. But yeah, it doesn't go that fast, and it doesn't really have shock, so it's kind of bumpy in places, but, you know. So the, the thing makes its way uh, towards the south, uh, you make it, a, 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 you know, several miles. Um, the machine, once it gets on the open road, uh, he cranks the speed up a little bit and it starts to go faster. Then, then yeah, it, then it would definitely leave you behind where you just try just to let go and try to fly. And it's open. It doesn't have, like, anything over the top of you or anything. So you're just in the open air. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, Lalo is definitely hanging on for dear life now. The, uh... Like, ah! <laughs> Were you going to say something, David? David Larger? Yeah, that's who I was thinking. The other David. The better day. Ario. <laughs> Ario, did you have something you wanted to say there? Did I cut you off? No, I was just wondering if I could understand. Or I was saying we should just tie a string to Lalo and fly her like a kite. <laughs> but, um, man, Ario's been getting mean in those last couple <laughs> sessions. <laughs> but, uh, just while driving, I'm just going to see if I can understand how this thing works. Because the driver obviously knows. Oh, yeah, he, he tells you that it uses a magic crystal to heat water, which turns to steam and then turns uh, a, a couple of different uh, sets of uh, gears by the, the use of that. And then it has a second crystal that cools the steam and turns it back into water, and it's a constant cycle, which causes the, the gears to keep turning and then turns the wheels, etc. Uh, magic crystals, dilithium or kaiba? <laughs> Both. <laughs> um, but he, 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 you know, he ex explains it carefully to you. And, you know, the only time he clams up is if you ask him how the crystals were created. It's like, you know, trade secret thing. So. Tell me where to get the crystals. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the machine, though, carries you... Uh, roughly half the distance or so to the town uh, before it gets dark and then uh, you stop and he turns the machine off to make camp for the night well that cart got us here with some haste might call it a haste cart trademark I think like confuse that with the sandwich that you made Well, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think the sandwich thing is taken off. I think someone stole my idea. That's too bad. It was a really great invention. That's, yeah, some some guy in, in uh, Baldur's Gate is rich now. The, in, <laughs> the keeper of the crappy inn. Yep. Oh, my gosh. So, uh... 
you may camp that night. Um, wake up the next morning. Uh, get ready uh, to leave. Put everything away. Climb up in the cart. And as you do so, a, a large black raven lands on the front of the cart. Color of the eyes. Suddenly. Huh? What color are the eyes? Green. Ooh, just like what was what uh, you said, a, a green-eyed raven. The scribe is like, ah! It's a big bird. Uh, he edges back and crawls into the back seat away from the raven who just sits near the controls, eyeing the party. I'll give it a bit of a ration. It ignores the food. Instead, it seems to be eyeing the book that you carry. Alright, I'll look back. Uh, we kind of need this map. But you can have the book if you need it back. I'll hand the book back. Yeah, you set the book in front of the raven. And it, it taps its beak against the wooden cover of it several times, gouging the wood. Oh, well, that answers that question. And then it looks at the party again, and then it hops down into the dirt and begins scratching in the dirt. Oh, does it make shapes in the dirt? It does. Ooh. It goes over and looks at it. Uh, after a few moments, uh, the raven hops away, and you can see that it's scratched words in common in the dirt. Hey, guys, look at this. The raven just is telling us something. What to say? Whoa, dude. You speak raven, bro? I do, apparently. It's, it simply says, glad you've come. Aw, that's nice. We're glad you've come, too. The raven, He's a nice raven. The raven. Or she. The raven starts scratching in the dirt again. When it gets done, it hops back again. And, and this time you see scratching in the dirt is, you must kill the monsters in my home. Monsters? Huh. I'll translate it to everybody else because I don't think that they know what that says. Oh, I also speak <laughs> especially, well. especially you know, um, uh, Hunk. He needs a little help. Whoa. Apparently, I'm really good at understanding ravens. Hmm. Oh, lost will. We lost Will? Yep. Well, there's no way then. Yeah, we don't know where we're going. Because <laughs> well, where you have a will, you've got a way. But we don't have a will. We have no way. <laughs> oh, man. So, so you don't know you don't know which way is which way. It's all caught on the stream. <laughs> all right, so uh, I'm sure he'll be back. He probably had internet trouble again. Like he, that's what he's saying. He had internet trouble. I don't know. Uh, I'm not. I'm not having problems this time. It's not you. Yeah, for once, Mister. Uh, what was it? Eight megabit. Megabit. <laughs> Woo. Don't broadcast my handicap to everyone. <laughs> I mean, that's on a good day. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we'll, we'll just keep going. He'll either catch up or not. Um, all right, so the raven looks at the party uh, expectantly and just waits. What kind of monsters are you talking about? And is your home in this which way? 
The raven shakes its head. It uh, oh. flies up and taps its beak on the book again. It, where, where is the map? Is it in the book? No, I still have the map. Because I was going to give the book back. So it, it eyes it eyes the book for a second, and then eyes you, and then calls at you. Car! Oh, yes. I, I understand Raven well enough to... No, it wants a map. won't put the map out. It uh, so which is your home? eyes the map and then uh, reaches down gently and taps on the castle-like building down in the bottom left-hand corner. And then it goes, ka ka at you. Go clear out the castle. Hmm. Well, you all up for some monster slaying? To it, save a raven's castle? The raven at that point flutters uh, its feathers a bit and then uh, launches itself in the air and flies away. Did, wait, was that actually a crow the whole time and I've been very offensive? Clean a raven? There's a little tinkling of, of bells comes from behind you as Jingling appears to be laughing. What, what's it saying? Because I can't tell the difference between a laugh and speech. Body language. Oh, he's Body just, language. He's just, <laughs> he's just laughing at you. <laughs> he really thinks you're hilarious. Well, I'm glad someone in this party appreciates me. Uh, J Jingling then turns to you and uh, sa says, The raven isn't what it seems. And then laughs again. Well, I mean, he says that the raven isn't really a raven. Or something. Yeah, okay. It's a crow. Dude, like you're saying that it's more of like a murder type of bird than an unkindness, dude? He didn't really say that. I mean, he just said it doesn't, it's not what it seems. It could be his intentions. Oh, that would be terrible. Is it his intentions? I asked Jingling. Jing well, I'm sorry, what were you asking Jingling? Uh, asking if, uh, if it was the intentions that aren't what it seems because of Hunk's remark. Uh, Jingling just shrugs, shakes shakes his head, and then cocks his head to one side and shakes his head again. I don't think he does. Mm -hmm. Well... I mean, we have nothing else to go on for now, so we can at least check out that area. I mean, <sighs> in the morning, it's still night, right? Um, it was in the morning, in the morning. yeah. Uh, I wish we knew which way to go. Oh, Thrax! Which way is that way? <laughs> Best guide ever. Let's go. <laughs> so there's there's a what what remains of a road heading in that direction that you've been following, but it, you know it doesn't look like it's definitely not well traveled, possibly not traveled in quite some time. Anyways, you the scribe crawls back to the front. 
looks around anxiously to make sure that the raven is gone and then uh, fiddles with the controls to get the wagon going again. Um, about noon or so, uh, you come uh, over a rise and look down below you and you can see uh, what is obviously the remains of a, of a town, a small town. Um, the all of the buildings look like they've been burned down. There's almost nothing left. Hmm. It's like that scene in Mulan where they go into the village. Mulan, that's one of my cousins. You know Mulan? I love that play. Play? The remains of the road run, you know, straight into town, so. Alright, um. How far away is it? Like, can we see any activity or anything? Uh, I mean, it's the next hill over, so. Um. Probably four or five hundred yards. Hey, to maybe the we should um, maybe we should just uh, take a look for a moment before we actually go in there, just in case there's something in there. And it's around midday, like I said. So fair enough. But uh, just looking at this map, I'm guessing the part of the book where it ends very abruptly is uh, the hand. And the horn. horn. It's an it supposed to be an ampersand. Okay. Yeah, if you look in the text at the bottom right hand side, it tells you. Oh, I see. The hand and horn, I'm guessing, is where it ended abruptly. Hey, is, is that why you're not like a head librarian? It's because you don't read everything? It's, it's called dyslexia. <laughs> That's right. I'm adding that as canon now. Ario Hayes car is dyslexic. We can never trust you to actually read anything and give us good information. Punk, I guess you're the librarian now. What, dude? I've always wanted to do that. So many different books to punch, dude. Oh my god, I do have a magic quill that writes for me. Sweet. <laughs> but does it write it in dysle dyslexic script? It's just Ooh. giant characters. <laughs> All right, what are you guys doing? Uh, we're going to investigate uh, which way. You're going to head in? Let's see sure if there's anything there's... of note here. Yeah, before we, get, before we get in, just kind of observe, make sure that there's nothing moving around or anything. Okay. Perception. Yep, go ahead and make a perception roll if you want to look around. It's going to be so awesome. I can feel it. Mm, nope. <laughs> I got so a point awesome. one. Should I try? Go for it. Here, here you can look. Right. And I'll be right back. Go okay. the bathroom real quick. I think I got dust in my eye. Oh, this haste cart thing. All right, you guys look around the, uh, you, well, you go into town and look around, right? So, and like I said, all you see is, you know, depressing foundations, ash and other debris. Right in the middle of town where the crossroads are uh, to three different roads that uh, leave the town, you find a broken down cart. Um, did you did you guys bring the cart in or did you walk in? She like probably walked. I would think if we're trying to be cautious, we probably aren't taking this 
loud contraption into town. Well, the scribe would have been like, you're not leaving me out here, and insisted on coming and bringing the cart. So the question is whether you're walking or not, not whether or not the cart is coming. <laughs> Why'd you ask? <laughs> <laughs> I want to know if you're walking. <laughs> Layla would have swung wide in one direction a little bit. So like, I'm not being next yeah. to that I'm thing. I'm definitely walking. Yeah. It's good for, good for my cart. <laughs> and probably would have been kind of along with the grass, trying to stay a little bit out of sight. All right. So as you're walking, walking around looking, I mean, you don't see anything, you know, um, nothing much remains of, of the town. Uh, it looks like it's been abandoned for years. Um, you're not sure what happened for sure. Um, you do find uh, the bones of um, some strange creatures in one section uh, and some broken weapons. So maybe there was a battle of some kind. Big, but big, small, medium. The, cre to the, the creatures are man sized. Okay whatever they were and they were not human or even completely humanoid um like i said in the in in the center of town at the crossroads you find a, a broken down wagon the the wheels have been broken to the point where this you know the spokes are broken the axles have fallen through them and it's sitting on the ground you know in really sad shape uh, as you uh, get up there, the the cart that the the uh, steam cart comes up behind you and and gets to the uh, intersection, and the scribe goes, "Which way? Which way?" Um, the map says this way. And you point off down one of the roads, and he goes that way. Okay. Yeah, that actually does have a arrow that says this way. Yeah. <laughs> he turns the knob, and the the cart starts to uh, rumble forward. Then it gives a high pitched whistle. There's a gasp of steam, and then a loud bang as something explodes underneath of it. Uh, pieces of metal go flying. Uh, are, were any of you close to it? Layla was not. <laughs> no, we were all investigating. So you, you you hear the tinkling of metal pieces flying metal. amongst the debris around you, and you're really glad you weren't closer where you might have been hurt by it. But, uh, yeah, uh, a massive amount of water starts pouring out of the bottom. Steam goes everywhere. The scribe... Uh, kind of hunkers in the, in the driver's seat for a minute and then once it calms down he gets down and goes oh no oh no it's broken oh the mysterious machine it broke down anything going on around no of course Layla lets out a yelp when it happens but then looks to see if there's anything coming or anything going on with such a loud noise uh i just keep your perception rolls and no you don't see anything okay yeah you wouldn't see anything at all i'm gonna not look around because cool guys don't look at explosions <laughs> cool guys walk away from explosions in a slow-mo walk i guess slow on myself to walk away from <laughs> Okay, so uh, the the scribe continues to tinker with it, and he comes out from underneath of it a little muddy, and and shakes his head. He goes, "It it blew the reservoir completely. I'm afraid it's not going any further." He walks over and kicks the other broken down cart blast it 
Can you use parts from this one to fix this stuff? I mean... <laughs> he goes, No! I, I need the proper a proper container to replace it, and it's, it's got to be capable of handling the pressure. No, I'm going to have to go all the way back to Candlekeep. You know, that is a problem with proprietary parts that you're not all, allowed to be able to, you know, have spare parts for. That's a bad sign. Yes, I can see that now. Spare parts. Something you want to carry with you. He, he pulls out a quill and a, and a journal of some kind and starts writing in it. Hey, can you make it not so bouncy? I got a headache writing that thing. <laughs> oh, ooh, and a way to hold on. Maybe like a, I don't know, a harness or something? So that way I'm not going to fly out. I mean, you're not going to have a lot of fairies running around in there, but what if you do? They would want it. He nods, and under his breath he goes, Fairy cage, as he writes it down. Not a cage! Not a cage. <laughs> hey, you see this badge? You should treat me better. Or whatever it is you gave me from the from Candle Keep. <laughs> your, your Candle Keep badge. Show him your badges, boys. <laughs> I don't need those stinking badges. <laughs> All right, so uh, he he tinkers with it a little bit more, and then finally he he huffs and says, "I'm headed back to Candlekeep. Uh, good luck!" And he starts walking back down the road towards Candlekeep. Hey, do you want us to take these crystals out and, and safeguard them for you? <laughs> he just waves his hand at you and keeps. He going. says yes. He says yes. All right, we found the treasure, everybody. <laughs> we got home. <laughs> Gonna be rich. All right. Um, so I guess we'll start heading that way. Actually, you should be heading this way. Oh, well, fine. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many jokes in this, it's not even funny. All right. Uh... <laughs> Well, now that we have a will, we have a way, so... Do we have a will? We have a will. We have a will. We lost our will for a bit. And we now he is back. Found our will. Welcome back, Will. They made it... <clears throat> they made it to uh, Witch Way, which they found completely burned down. And they went into town, and the steam-powered cart broke down. The scribe that was running it said he had to go back to Candlekeep for parts and started walking back towards Candlekeep, leaving you alone with these other gentlemen and lady and lady fairy. Uh, anyways, in which way? Anyways, uh, as you're looking around still, uh, a a uh, dog runs around the corner suddenly, uh, a one building, and comes pelting up towards the party. I it's, fly up. It, Out of the way. It's a very large dog. It I fly up. <laughs> stands stands about uh, three feet tall at the shoulder. Uh, angry looking dog curious looking dog actually the dog appears to be scared it runs towards the party slides underneath the cart and huddles behind one of the wheels alright preparing for a fight someone's chasing this thing is there anything around I, you don't see anything. Hmm. Those are the structures around us. I know we're in the middle of a little area, but... This is a kind of a roundish center uh, hub that you're sitting in, like the town square, as it were. And then the buildings radiate out from there. Good places to hide. Just to kind of watch. 
I mean the wagon. There's a dog in the wagon. Not the other wagon. I'll go to that wagon. (laughs) I mean... You got two broke wagons. Pick one. Uh, Let's see here. What was I looking for? Oh, oh. Jingling, could you could you like um, turn invisible and go check out what's going on, and you can let me know what's what what's happening. Just don't go too far from me, so we can actually communicate. You, who are you talking to? Jingling. Oh. Uh, so. If you ask Jingling to do something, Jingling will go do it. I mean, more okay, or less. So I'm, I'm asking him to turn invisible, and go investigate. So, and uh, to let me know what's what's going on. So Jingling, Jingling turns invisible, and all you hear is Jingling do this, Jingling do that. Is it slowly Please, fades? Slowly fades off. You're my favorite sprite. <laughs> do you want me to do a? Uh, perception check? Uh, no. Um, Jingling flies off, uh, looking around, and, uh, you don't see or hear anything for a while, and then Jingling appears right in front of you, just like an inch from your nose, right in front of you, and goes, Bodies! You said that really creepy. Creepy creepy. bodies. Okay, I'm going to back up just a couple of feet. And, um, uh, hang on. (laughs) And I'll turn around to the rest of everybody else. He's freaking me out, but uh, he says that there's some creepy bodies out there were dude like not like dead bodies or i don't know i'm afraid to ask he's a little weird right now uh, dude we should like check that hey, out dude. i look at him inside check is he in me no no oh. no i have a sprite go ahead inside <laughs> the sprite i was like yeah how'd you know how many Didn't people have the inside works? check their own familiars <laughs> Someone who chose a familiar that actually has a light. Yep. <laughs> oh, oh no idea. Yeah. <laughs> it's too freaky. I don't. I, I don't know what's going on. I mean, uh, Jingling is a mysterious sprite. You're not sure. Jingling reminds me of uh, the Christmas Critical Role thing where uh, the one guy stabs Santa Claus. He reminds me of that guy. <laughs> okay. Spoiler. Oh, I've never seen that one. Hey, hey. It's um, a guy who stabs Santa Claus. Great. You don't know which one. You don't know which one. <laughs> a creepy one. So. <laughs> All right. What are you guys going to do? It's been out for several years. I don't feel bad. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? You hear whimpering from the from the dog underneath the wagon. We gotta save the dog. It's an obligation. No he one cannot not save the dog. He better not eat me. I'm just saying. He better leave my wings alone. Mm. No promises. We still need to sell those. So what are you going to do? Apparently save the dog. <laughs> well, that's easily said. However... Save yeah. the dog from what? Scary bodies. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, man. Scare box. Yeah. Mission accomplished. <laughs> For saving the dog from existentialism. We saved a dog. We got some loot. I, I mean, I feel like we're done. All right, end of session. That was fun playing, guys. <laughs> No, seriously. I, I, what are you going to do? Uh, like, you I, don't even I, know I, where the bodies are, so... Well, I, I sent them off in a direction from where the dogs went, so I would imagine that that's where they're at. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean presuming he stayed on a straight course, he was invisible. It's true, but I'm going to assume that he did. <laughs> because she doesn't know any better. Right. Alright, we can go check it out. Yeah, let's go this way. That's where I sent him. Yes, that you're going that way. No, this the, way. Which, oh, which way? not this way. Is it that way? I don't know which way? way you're going. Which way? No, which way is here? <laughs> which way is here? Yeah. Oh no, not this again. Whoa. <laughs> Was it first? I just realized that which way is like the name of the town as well, dude. That is interesting. Whoa. <laughs> Dude, that's uh, crazy. I didn't even realize, dude. All right. Well, so let's go investigate this. So you, you head over towards the direction that you think the ferry went. And uh, after a little while, you've come upon a... Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's a sprite. We don't all look alike. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. So Dang. <laughs> Anyways. This is going to have to cancel, Ben. <laughs> All right. So you, you head over that direction. Uh, you come upon a, uh, a foundation that had, uh, of a building that had a, a, a basement. And as you get closer, you smell something that doesn't smell real good. Looking down in the bottom, you see four bodies in a line, uh, like they've been lined up for, uh, I don't know, rights or something. They're not covered up. Old bodies? Newer bodies? They don't, they, they look like they're dead, but they don't look like they've necessarily been dead that long. Is there anyone around? Anybody else around? Yeah. Make a perception roll. I feel like Bela would be looking too. Okay. Not that it's going to do any good. 18. Yep. See? Dice hate me today. <laughs> they hate me so bad. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Oh, wait. All right, so you guys look around, and no, you don't see anybody else. I'm gonna throw a firebolt into the chest of one of the bodies. The the bodies are are interesting, but it appears to be a a uh, yeah, looks like a blonde. Uh, it just looks like four humans, probably uh, members of this town. Maybe, but you that it's odd because the bodies are somewhat fresher than the uh the damage to the town. You see a, a blonde haired male uh, dressed in a white smock and kind of lightly blue colored pants. Uh, it's a pretty robust looking male. Uh you see a, a red headed uh female uh in a purple dress. So well, probably was quite pretty in uh, life. You see a brown-haired, uh, tall, thin, gangly-looking male in a green shirt and brown pants, and another uh, shorter, uh, brown-haired female in an orange smock and a skirt. Okay, so I'm gonna cast Toll the Dead on one of them. Okay. So, that's up to you to determine whether or not they even have a wisdom to make a saving throw. Otherwise, it just kind of does nothing. It does nothing. Uh, Alright. 
And they're probably not zombies. Doesn't that do necrotic damage? It does if they fail their saving throw, but I don't know if it works if they just straight up don't have a mind to, to take the hit. Can I cast it on an inanimate, inanimate objects? Can you toll the dead on a chair? I mean, technically you can cast anything on it. But... Yeah, but would it do anything? Because it doesn't have a mind to affect. You cast uh, Identify on a non-magical book. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, that said, hey, it's... And I identified it as a non-magical book. Yep. Just does nothing. Yep. So I just... Effectively poked a body with a stick, but didn't disturb it. I think that's more self depend. I mean, nothing. Nothing really happens uh, because whatever the case may be, they're not capable of being targeted as in a they're inanimate objects since they're dead. I mean, it's not really going right. to do anything to them. Experiment noted. I'm going to toll the dead on every uh, treasure chest we ever encounter. Oh boy. It's the new Eldritch Blast. But it won't break it. It will determine whether or not it is a mimic. But it will not break it. It's a little metagamey-ish thing. It might have an intelligence of 20. Uh, it's just what my character Strategy. Right. Exactly. It's just what your character does. Strategy. Um, all right, so you have creepy bodies that are currently not aggressive. Was this the area that the dog ran away from? Yes. Hmm. Anyone have any ideas? I mean, Thrax, you've been kind of through this area. What what do you think? Uh, Thrax turns, looks uh, at you, and says that uh, he's not sure what to think of the situation. There was nothing here when he was here before. Did we lose Will again? I see him online. Uh, he's having computer difficulties. Okay. It's too bad I don't want him to be left out either. Uh, it's just, uh, computer problems are what they are. At least he... I think I'm back, though. Oh, sweet. Hey. We hear you. Alright, yeah, it was a ERP issue with my BIOS. Huh. Didn't like the programs that we're using. <laughs> well, no, it... Apparently, it's something with the Aorus motherboard that I have. The ERP doesn't play well with the Bluetooth and the uh, WAN, the WAN module, so it just knocks it out all of a sudden. Huh. Okay. Well, if you're back, you know, like I said, you don't. When you passed through here before, last time you're here, there was, there was nothing here. There were no bodies, no dog, so. Sounds like we need to figure out what went on here. So this is recent. How long ago were you here? Could have been months. Could have been years. I don't really keep track of time. Time is a flat circle. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Time is a soup. You, you were here. Already you probably Bloody. would have been here sometime within the last year. Time is specifically a weird suit. I'll let you, you decide how long ago. It doesn't really matter. I have to guess it would have been three seasons ago. Alright. Three seasons of plays? What play were you watching? The 
It was just bad dead silence. To, yeah, that was just a bad <laughs> reference to, to TV shows. <laughs> nobody's wow. nobody's old enough to no get our references. We call them series here. <laughs> series? What is a what is a series? They're plays. They're plays. <laughs> oh, you mean series of plays? Oh, I understand what you're saying now. Okay. Gotta write that down in my book. So many things to learn. Hmm. Uh, I'm gonna head on back to the dog then, I guess. This is the new circle on the ground. Okay, so you head back towards the dog. Just kind of cowering under the wagon still. Yep. Pokes its head out as you get closer. I'll, I'll offer it some food. It uh, uh, accepts uh, uh, your food by eating it all very, very quickly. All right. Dog. Smacks its lips. It... Looks at you and goes... Wow, thank you! God, I fucking knew it from that picture. Alright. <laughs> Alright. Uh, so, you can talk. That's neat. Um, do you mind telling me what happened here? A uh, dog hangs its head and just uh, kind of shakes it back and forth and goes, "May I ride?" Dead, dead. Uh, yeah, we noticed. Um, what killed them? Berries. Berries. <gasps> Layla, dude, Layla, you killed these people, dude. I wasn't Wait. even here. Hang on. What fairies would do this? I can't believe you, dude. Layla sent their companion ahead, and then they just found four bodies. It's a little convenient. <laughs> he was acting a little strange when he got back. Jingling, did you do that? Jingling just shakes his head slowly back and forth with a wide-eyed expression. All right, dog. Well, what fairies did this? Not Where are they? Not fairy. Berries. Berries. Wow. Uh, ah. That makes. Much more sense. I thought I was going to have, to have a stern talking to with some fairies. Well, finger! And the dog takes off. But wait, where, where, where are the berries? Dog's gone. <laughs> what mushrooms did we eat? <laughs> Zoinks. <laughs> I don't want to make this any longer than it already is. Let's move yeah. on. <laughs> It's a good Easter egg. I didn't catch that first until I saw the picture. You didn't even get the mystery machine? You rode <laughs> in it here. <laughs> <laughs> the mysterious machine? Come on. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. <laughs> I figured sooner or later you had to get it, but I keep dropping hints until somebody got it. All right, moving on. So... Let's see. What do you guys want to do now? Oh, we're gonna keep going where we were originally gonna be going, I guess. Which which way? Yes. No. Yonder fourth to which way? This way. Well you're already at which way. Yeah, I'm pointing and saying well, I thought it was this way. Or it's that way. Going this way towards the hand and horn. The handy horn. The handy horn. 
<laughs> Leaving that one alone. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So you walk to the edge of town, and when you get to the edge of town, you notice there's still a a, a sign uh, that is upright on the side of the road with an arrow pointed what? down the road away from the city, and it says, this way. I feel like this means something. Probably means this way. Or it's a big obvious trap. Looking at this map, we can go find like a boat and just go down this river all the way to Woodbridge. Woodbridge. <laughs> Woodbridge. <laughs> and I just walk from there. Say that five times. Fast. Whoa, dude. It's Woodbridge. Yeah. Okay. Woodbridge. <laughs> All right, so what are you going to do? We're going this way. Okay. Unless yeah. someone has something else they want to do. I feel like I want to go another way. And Thrax, what are you doing? We're going to go this way. You're going to follow the party? I mean, you and you you don't really know what they're doing. I just want to point that out. Like, you you were you were kind of conscripted <laughs> to lead them to which way, and now they're going down the road to this way, talking about some hand and horn. So, anyways, I believe in my backstory that my companions are worth dying for, if I remember right. Oh, you're... Well, he bonds fast. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's like, I need a reason to be with them. I'm uh, Leave me alone. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so, I mean, as far as that goes, your character would probably probably be curious what is going on like why they bothered to come here in the first place uh, but you could certainly try asking them what they're doing or or shall we assume that they told you about the map and what they're up to well we've had a 35 mile journey yeah that's what i was thinking I think too layla would have talked his ear off Okay. Too okay. We'll, we'll we'll just say we'll just say that Thrax is informed then, and hey, treasure, right? Loot. So you travel down the road a ways. Um, it was about midday when you got to which way. Um, it's about an hour down the road, and you you come across uh two formations of rock standing up from the the small hills to either side of the road uh and one of them looks a lot like a hand the other one looks like possibly like a unicorn's horn hmm. and they are on the uh southern side of the road Next to the hand, which stands pretty much right beside the road, uh, is the beginnings of a trail that leads south. All right. Is there... Hmm. Is the horn pointing in any direction? The sky. Yes, the treasure's in the sky. But, uh... Oh, there... I guess I get it now. I can I can reach it. I'm sure. And there's no other like, man-made structures or anything. And and Lalo thing. was never seen again. <laughs> Actually, hawk. she she flies up into the air, <laughs> and the hawk swoops by. Fuck, gone. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> Lose so many characters that way. <clears throat> So, are you gonna? What are you gonna do? You're gonna follow the trail to the south, or continue along this way? 
So it looks like on the map we have this way just kind of goes into nowhere. South will take us down to Wilbur Bridge. Or three tree, tree Hill first. All right. You continue to the south along the trail and, uh, yeah. and into a forest. In the forest, uh, you travel along this path uh, as it winds around. And uh, eventually the forest opens up and you can see off, of the, off to the uh, east of you a tall spire of stone on which stand three tall pine trees. There's a path that leads, uh, that starts turning to the north, and one that leads straight south from here. I think we know the map. We should probably keep going south. Yeah, north would just take us back up to which way? Let's continue. Onward to the bridge. All right. Uh, you continue on a little further. Uh, it starts to get dark uh, about the time that you come across a uh, covered wooden bridge over a small river. Um, almost a stream at this time of year, actually. And you uh, notice that the bridge is... is pretty dilapidated actually it's it's serviceable and it looks like peop someone has replaced enough planks especially in the in the center of the bridge that you could walk across it but you'd never get a wagon across it all right yeah, that's a good thing i fly i don't weigh much well dude i'm sure it's fine dude it's probably safe. Well, we'll go ahead and let uh, Hunk go first. <laughs> probably fine. All right, dude. Sure, it's fine. It's okay. It's okay. I'll go with you. Or all right. I'll hang back for a moment. Sam. All right. So, Hunk, you go across. Yeah, man. Uh, it creaks a little, but it's fine. It's pretty sturdy, actually. Whoa, dude. It's so sturdy. All right. Now I'll go across. <laughs> Get to the other side, and you wander into um, a another stand of trees. The these, instead of pines, you notice these are more conifers. All right. it's, it uh, is full on dark now. You have nothing to see by except for the light of the stars, as the moon has not yet risen. Go set up camp. Just off in the trees a little bit. Okay. Everybody else agree with that? Yeah, man. Sure. Yep. Uh, we can take a watch each. Uh, as you're setting up camp, you hear some strange music emanating from the trees and it starts getting louder it sounds like somebody singing but it's it's disjointed and it's um guttural in uh, nature not I'm high and i'm gonna try to hide Okay, roll stealth. Not bad. What are the rest of you guys going to do? Just doing the same thing. Whoa, dude, I'll do the same thing. And up in a tree. I'll be up I... in a tree to do it. And I'm going nice. to rub rocks on He people finally gets a 20. <laughs> and make finally. everyone all quiet like. <laughs> oh my god, all right. Uh, <laughs> oh, really I got a 33 so, then. Yeah. <laughs> I got a 21. Uh, okay, should so... I, I should roll for... Uh... No. Oh, yeah, for your other one. Um, yeah, but he's going to go invisible, so does that give him advantage? So, um, 
I'm pretty sure, Will, that you haven't downloaded uh, or put in uh, beyond the Beyond 20 link that I was telling you about, the add-on for whatever browser you're using. No. What 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 browser are you using, just out of curiosity? I've got Firefox. Okay. Does, I can't remember if it works with Firefox. Yeah, I, I've got Firefox. Okay. Um, it does. So you can get Beyond 20 for that. If you wanted to install it real quick, you can. Or you can just roll it on your character sheet. That's fine. But you need to roll uh, Stealth so you would click on it on your character sheet. And I've actually... Um, Fourteen. Fourteen. So twenty-four. 24. So I'm gonna have um, uh, Jingling out in the open, and as I'm in the tree, I'm going to, since I'm kind of hidden, uh, proceed through his his eyes. Okay. So he's like up in the air, out of the way, and invisible, and yeah, with the stealth of twenty-nine for him. Okay. Oh wait, can I, yes, I can do that. I'm here. Yeah. I'm gonna roll perception too, just to get out of the way. Hey, my rolls are good now, finally. Okay, so. Uh... As you're looking out there, you see a creature, kind of green-skinned, carrying a, a short, gray-looking staff with some kind of a head on the top of it, dressed all in pink uh, clothes with like a pointed cap on, kind of dancing and headed in the direction of the party's, uh, the beginnings of their camp. Is it smallish or what size? Yeah, it's smallish. Small like a goblin? Mm-hmm. Okay. As it gets closer, you get a better look at it. And this is what you see. Whoa, well, dude, it's got, like, pink on, bro. Wait, where'd you post that? It's in roll 20. I don't see it. It's in the chat. Oh, in the chat. Okay. Yep. There we go. Anyways, it continues to dance its way up towards the uh, the party's uh, makeshift camp, uh, beginning as your camp. And uh, once it gets there, it stops and looks around. See if it spots any of us. Let's see, shall we? Where's my stuff here? Let's see, perceptions, wisdom, right? Yeah. So yeah, no. The creature doesn't see anybody, but it does see evidence that you were here. So it begins to sniff around and look carefully. It uh, snickers and laughs to itself constantly. Um, <clears throat> you can see it. Uh, let's, let's see, Ario. You can see it cast uh, uh, suddenly. Cast spells. It casts Mage Hand, and uh, seems to use it to sift through the dirt that some of you were walking on. I'm going to ask uh, Jing, Jingling telepathically to, um, since I know Faye, uh, so to use this heart sight to see what kind of is, is the emotional state, and if he fails a DC 10 charisma saving throw, also known as alignment, 
Uh, Celestial Spiel. Oh, yeah, so he's not any of that. So, yeah, so. So, Charisma? And, uh, yeah, Charisma 10. And he's still invisible. I'm assuming he can stay that way because he's not really 20. attacking or anything. Uh, Oof. if you're using an ability to cast a spell, it'll end his visibility. But... Well, I don't know if it's, it's just, um, here, let me put it in. Unless you're using an item in his building, oh, it's not it. end up ending. Hold on, let me, it's not, let me post that section. Hold on. There, so hard sight. So it just touches a creature and magically knows the creature's current emotional state. Is it listed under action? Uh, let me go to the page. Uh, yes, it is. Right it and is under the actions section. And I'm but I mean, that's like all abilities, but okay. Yeah, obviously, DM's call. Yeah, that's... But I think under <laughs> invisibility rules, normally it's... Wears off. Yeah, the invisibility will vanish if you do that. Okay. I mean, figure it'd be like right up above his head, and as soon as I'd see. Actually, Layla wouldn't know. So, yeah. We'll just try it out. Gonna do it anyways? Yep, gonna do it anyways, because she do not know. Okay. That was the charisma save I had to make, or a different one? Uh, no, that's it. So you're, you're saved at least, but that doesn't mean that she doesn't know the emotion, or that uh, uh, Jingling doesn't know the emotional state. Yeah, of the, the, the emotional state of the creature is, uh, it, it's actually kind of hard to sort through. It seems to shift very quickly between curiosity, giddy joy, and ferocious uh, desire of some kind. I'll tell um, Jingling to get out of there real fast. Turn invisible, go back, get out of there. And I probably have to roll again, don't I? For his... So, right. you were... Mm, yeah. Go ahead and make a stealth check for me, for Jingling. Yep, yeah. pass without a trace lasts an hour, if it hasn't been that long. 24. Dang. All it's right. Got a plus eight, so yeah. I, I really don't think you know. Yeah, no. So. <laughs> uh, it was a light touch. Zips he away. Didn't even know. Yep. <laughs> it just continues dancing around in circles and chanting. Seems to be uh, possibly casting a, a long term spell. Well, I mean, that's kind of a lot of stuff, so I don't know if we should just sit in here and hide for an hour. Oh, that's true. Your stuff is there, isn't it? Yeah. So, so it, yeah, wanna... it, it would probably actually not cast be casting a spell. It would be digging through your stuff. Okay. So I would probably take say mage hand and whispering very quietly literally hiding behind the tree <laughs> oh, okay um and cast mage hand to go over and flick a stone near it okay well uh let me go ahead and, and say that the the creature is reaching into your bag pulling out whatever object looking at it sniffing it possibly licking it and then going yeah and throwing it aside so you throwing a stone over there. Let's see if it even cares. Nope. It doesn't care. It just continues doing what it's doing. Okay. It finds uh, it finds somebody's rations and scarfs one of their rations down. Let's see. I'll roll a d4. Who is it? Will. You lose one ration. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, for losing that ration, is there any way that I could pop out and shoot it with an arrow in the leg? Oh my God. Sure. <laughs> Just make an attack roll is all you got to do. So, okay. uh, Anya really wants his food. I'm murdering. <laughs> I'm murdering anyone. On your character sheet, 
Uh, you just look next to the weapon that you're going to use. In this case, your longbow, right? So you roll a d20 and then add four. Oh, he's already got the... He's got the add-on in there. <laughs> See? So much easier. So, yes, 19 will hit for six piercing damage. So the arrow uh, pierces the creature. You see it pierce the creature, and it cries out, and then there's this explosion of pink around the wound. The arrow vanishes, and the creature seems completely unhurt. It turns around immediately, noticing you. Roll initiative. Do we have a map for this? Eh, not really. I was trying to upload one earlier, but it wouldn't let me upload one. So what are you going to do? Oh, I didn't. I'm faster than lay low. Uh, and I'll have to do... Wait, I have to check. See if I have to do initiative. Yeah, for your familiar, right. you do. Okay, so I will pull him up. Well, let's just move him out of here because he's not actually going to be fighting. Oh, man, I totally forgot Falcon and Paul Carruthers are here. Yeah, they're here, but... They're with us? Yep. Oh. Well, DM, yeah, are they gonna fight or? Uh, no, they are not. Okay. I want them with us so that they uh, are around if they decide to play next time. But obviously, I'm not gonna have them participate in this. All right. Uh, so the only one we're missing is Will. So Will, on your character sheet, there'll be an initiative. Um, it will be. Uh, top center underneath proficiency proficiency is to the right of charisma underneath that is initiative so you can just click on the beyond 20 button will uh, automatically roll that for you can we also get the sprite uh, something in there for him or do you want me just to keep track of it ah, you can just keep track of it it's not a big deal. Okay. He'll go after the nail bug. And... I mean, if you need something to track it here, I mean, here's Ubrak. Oh, okay. I don't know where you want him. Uh, yeah, I'll just... Yeah, you can't move him yourself. And then... Oh, I can't do anything with them. It doesn't matter. Oh, there he is. Cool. What, what's his uh, 412? It, no, it's actually 6.18 because was, I was just trying to get... Uh, sure. I forgot I can't manipulate his character. Nope. Okay. There you go. Okay, cool. Done. And then we'll go 7. Done. Okay. All right, Hunk, you're up. What are you going to do? I'll run towards it if it's looking at us menacingly. Sure. We'll just go ahead Great. and say you guys are where you are. Can I get within melee range? Oh, where is it on this map? Where is what? Okay, so this is Mind Palace, yeah? Yeah, more or less. All right, Wait, can I get to can, You guys should be on the same map I'm on. So, you can use this as... But, but yeah, Mind Palace is fine. I don't really care. The creature's not on the page, though, right? It's right there. Nope. That yeah, this, yeah. Oh, okay. I thought that was the cat person, so. Well, it was, until oh, I renamed rat. it. <laughs> 5, 10, yeah, 15, 20, 25, 30. 
Uh, 35, I'm actually going to go around it, and I'm going to attempt to trip it. Going to try to trip it? Yeah, you need to make a saving throw. That is a strength save. Okay. Seventeen. Yeah, that's a success. I believe I still get to roll to hit it. Oh, actually, I wouldn't have been able to do that yet. I have to roll to hit first. It's a twelve hit. No. <laughs> well, then that doesn't matter. Um, okay, and then I will punch it. Yeah. No, right, well, also, that's my turn. Also misses. <laughs> So you hunk runs advice. forward, gets around behind it, tries to sweep the leg. Creature just kind of dances. I actually can't up. do that. Oh. So that doesn't get used because I didn't hit. Oh. Well, yeah, but you tried oh. to hit it, so you tried to yeah. sweep the leg. The creature, while it's dancing, just seems to dance over your leg. and You, you spin and try to punch it, and it just moves out of the way and you're you're like incredulously looking at the creature as it grins at you all right and then it I, wow i can't believe it gets to go next that's crazy all right it's turn hmm well i suppose uh, it is going to try to whack you with its stick. That would be a miss. Yep, miss. And that is its turn. Okay. You see kind of a healthy pink glow grow around the creature though during its turn go ahead thrax your turn what would you like to do on your character sheet if you look at actions it'll tell you uh what you can do you can you, ha you can attack cast a spell dash disengage dodge etc probably attack with something Will? Sorry, I was muted. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and move within uh, combat melee combat range if I can. Yeah, the tokens, uh, yeah, you should be controllable by you, so. There we go. Okay. And then I will go with a melee attack. With your short sword? Yep. Okay. 21 hits. Uh, as you go to swing the sword, though, that pink aura around the creature seems to envelop you. Go ahead and make a charisma saving throw. On your character sheet, you'll see the saving throws in a box on the left side, close to the top. Click on the charisma one there. CHA. That is a failure. So as you pull your weapon out and start to swing at the creature, suddenly... You are overwhelmed by the sheer uh, nobility and uh, worthiness of this creature. You fall to your knees and begin to worship it instead. Wood, dude, they're like in together, man. And what is that this? ends your turn. <laughs> Sorry, it's messed up, I know. <laughs> All right. Uh, looks like it's Jingling's turn. So Jingling, I'm going to have him attack with uh, his bow. So you're using your action for this. Um, actually, for this, it's a bonus action. Okay. How does that work? Because you have to issue with that on your turn, right? That's so good. No, he's got his own initiative. I know, but it, so I, I don't. I mean, the the idea is to subdue it. Is uh, I I guess I would say, you know, subdue the thing. And so, 
It's not like he's going to do a lot of damage. Everything he can do is one hit yeah. point of damage. That's really pretty... chain is so confusing. Yeah. Yep. Just do it. Let's move on with our lives. Okay, so 20. Okay. So... Have Jingling make a charisma mm. saving throw, please. Okay, and also, uh, the uh, uh, Nilbug has to do a DC 10 save, constitution save as well, I at the same time. Out. Four. Okay. Four uh, poisoning. If it gets hit, yes. Well, it, he gets, he gets, if he gets hit, he gets poisoned for one minute. If he, oh yeah, so yeah. Wait, you didn't I, do it I yet. understand so, yeah. now. Yeah. Okay, so uh, he needs to do a charisma save. He's <laughs> yeah. Twelve. Ah, uh, that's successful. So you feel, you know, that you. Or, 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 yeah, Jingling <laughs> feel, shakes his head for a second and, and then makes his shot, which uh, strikes the creature. Okay. And now he's got to, cre- he has got to do a DC Constitution saving throw of 10 or better. Sure. He would. Worse. He would, except for he. You see another puff of pink pop out from the uh, the arrow where it pop, pierced the creature, and the arrow vanishes. The wound vanishes, and the creature seems completely unharmed. Really, he doesn't even have to make a save for that. Nope. That is messed up. <laughs> so over. I get. I get how it works now. You, ba- you basically, when you take the attack action, you have your pet attack set on your turn. On my turn? Yeah. Oh, so I'm doing it wrong then. Yeah, yeah. Just for future reference. Okay, alright. Ario, your turn. All right. So it works like a hunter pet then? Uh, Yeah, you can replace an attack with a pet attack. There you it go. works exactly like the hunter. So, not that useful, not not a technically <laughs> extra creature then that makes sense nope. though like i said i wasn't real worried about it so yeah all right Ariel? so it'll still be a bonus action for me to make him do that i'm going okay. to cast uh, magic what? missile at level two all right So that'll be 16 points of force damage from my magic missiles. Barraging. All right. Uh, The missiles all slam home. (laughs) <laughs> wham, 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 and the creature goes down. I got him. <laughs> Look at me, Thrax. I'm your god now. Uh, as soon as as soon as the creature dies, uh, its pink clothing changes to brown, and then the nimbus of pink fades from it, leaving you with a very ordinary looking goblin. come over and hmm. I wonder if the staff is anything important uh well I mean it's a stick oh man if only I had someone I could cast identify spending 10 minutes while everyone else can set up the tents and whatnot Dead rules. okay move tents. Uh, so you cast identify on this this the uh, scepter that the creature was holding and you you detect traces of magic that are quickly fading from it. It seems like whatever enchantment it may or may not have had uh, faded with its death. It's a stick. It is indeed a stick. With what appears to be a goblin's head carved on one end. Yeah, you're welcome to take it if you want. Staff is technically a monk weapon and punk wants it. Yep. You want just be the key. Goblin stick to beat people with. 
Wood, this dude. could be the key to everything. That doesn't even have any curves on it, dude. No way. <laughs> Looks a little creepy to me. Dude, I'm all about like the curves, dude. That what that weapon. Is I was hoping curves? that that my creature would live a little longer. No bogs can be really nasty. <laughs> you gotta get used to the magic missile, then. You gotta get used. I to always it. hit. You need that shield, but it does crazy damage too at low levels. Well, it yeah. What I should have done is used its uh one of its spells right away when instead of just having it try to beat on somebody, it would have been a lot worse. Anyways, moving on, moving on, moving on. Good job, you killed my monster. Uh, time for rest to get that spell slot back. Yep. Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> you did it, now you live with it. Alright, we gotta keep going. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's the middle of the... You go setting up camp. Oh, we I push on. I, I mean, mean if you on. want to I push was... on, you can. <laughs> it's night. <laughs> like you were I'm just right. setting up camp. I mean, uh, <laughs> right, dude. I just got like the just... adrenaline pump, and I want to keep going, dude. <laughs> I mean, you work out. You see the you see the rhyme on there. Uh, on the map, it says, "Follow the trail to the hand and the horn." Uh, past Three Tree Hill, over River Warren, to the Worm's Mark, in the Foggy Moors, west of there, the treasure's yours. So. You're in the forest there, before the Worm's Mark. So you make camp. Right, you make camp still, or you're moving on. That's all I need to know. I, I'd say camp. Camp if we can't see anything. Ah, uh, the moon's coming out. It's up to you. Oh, we'll get exhaustion. I'd say it's better to rest than just keep watch. Okay. Uh, nothing the... Nothing happens that night. Next morning, you wake up, continue your travels. Sorry, I, I'm not going to make it longer by yeah. doing that when I'm Speed not up. going to hit you with anything else. Um, All right. Moving right along. So you continue walking down the, the continually uh, less traveled path. It, it's harder and harder to follow it. Until you come to a, a hill rises before you, the top of which is completely blackened and charred. The dirt itself, parts of it look like they've been turned to glass, the, the dirt. Um, it's it's uh, been hit by intense heat. I don't want to fight a red dragon right now. Whoa, dude, there's a red dragon in there, bro? It's called the Scorcher, the Red Worm. And that smoke uh, Whoa. on the map has a bit of a noticeable drawing. Wait, Araya there. Have you never seen red worms, dude? Uh, they're all over the... There's one in the ground right there, dude. That's pink. Brown. Pink. Yeah, everybody Look has their red opinion. It is, dude. <laughs> Shake it in front of you. Anyway, what, what protein. What, oh, co dude. what color is the worm, Thrax? <laughs> pink covered in dirt, so it's pink and brown. <laughs> he agrees with everybody. <laughs> well, whatever it is, it tastes good, dude. Oh... It's all protein. That's what I'm saying, dude. I'll rip it in half. You want some? All right. So what are you guys doing? Here you go, dude. I, I say we give the beyond terrifying mountain a wide berth. Be, our way around it. Beyond the hill, it's not a mountain. Beyond the hill, you see uh, uh, the opening of a wide moor. To the south, the mountains begin. 
far as we're supposed to go. Yeah. Is it foggy? It, it, it starts to get foggy as you head into the moor. You uh, continue walking through the, the marshy land and uh, until you reach a tall hill uh, that rises up out of it, on which, uh, on the top of which, is a uh, a tall building. It's made of a, a stone house, uh, a chalet, built uh, a very, very uh, apparently very uh, expensive, probably to build such a building out here. Um, this old, large house. Uh, rises up on top of the hill uh, three stories tall total and it has a tower as well are there any ravens around let me just... or any people or humanoids or uh, anybody else looking about the place you do see that there are several black birds on the roof Do they have green eyes? Uh, they're too far to tell what eye color, I'm guessing. Boy, dude, what kind of bird is it? I don't know. It seems, it's a little bit too far to see that right now. Are they like a murder or like an unkindness, dude? I certainly hope it's not a murder. That doesn't yeah, look scary. Probably not be as good as an unkindness, dude. Ravens are a lot smarter. But like, crows are kind of cool too. But they all treat you well if you treat them well. Well, if they plan to burden us, let's murder them. Okay, let's see here. Crows are kind of more spooky, you know what I'm saying? Like, they eat a lot of dead bodies, you know? All right. All right. So, so, like I said, uh, you see a, a tall tower on the left side of the building as you're facing the entrance, um, and uh, you know, multi-storied uh, house. Uh, it's tall. Uh, it's definitely not a castle, though. And yeah. As you're um, as you're sitting there staring at it, a large black bird flies into view, and glancing down at you with its green eyes as it circles above your heads before finally drifting down and landing at your feet. Fly there again. I assume you're the same one that we met before, right? Ka! It starts scratching in the dirt. Uh, it only takes it a couple seconds to do it. it just hops back, and you can see my home. All right. Where is monster? anybody? In? Yeah. <laughs> is there anybody in there? It uh, just bobs its head at you at that question. I'm gonna use mage armor real quick. <laughs> <laughs> and then it scratches in the dirt some more. Dude, you're shiny. Whoa. And it says, uh, when it hops back this time, it says, please save them. What's it saying? This is its home, this house, and that um, that we need to save them. Who's them? Whoa, dude, we have to save them? Yeah. Oh. The raven looks at you, looks at the house, bobs its head a couple times, calls at you, caw, caw, and then uh, bounds into the air and flies up, uh, circling uh, high overhead. I'd say for 
it's a creature that wants us to save people or save whatever. It's not very helpful. But can we really trust it? True. It is just a unusual bird that gave us a book. Grab tokens. Gosh dang it, Ubrak, you have to come with us. Oh, well, the Nilbog doesn't. Bye bye, Nilbog. The other member, the other two members of your party, Falcon and uh, Paul, both volunteered to stay outside and keep an eye on the Raven. How noble of them, isn't it? I thought it was Wait, pretty noble. Falcon wants to be with Paul, dude. Yeah, they 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 they've talked. <laughs> well, now you get to explain that to them. <laughs> Seems unlikely, right? I know. You just say it's an effect of the berries that they ate. It's the berries. That's right. Okay, let's see what's going on here. Ah, I see. Okay. <laughs> so, I can reveal... The front of the building like so and then swap you guys over uh, as you approach the the front of the building you see that uh, there's still bushes and stuff around it still grass around it it's horribly unkempt the, the building itself is extremely dilapidated uh, it's been neglected for quite some time uh, the roof you could see uh, from a distance had a few holes in it you know it didn't look like it was in great shape um you you see uh, like i said there's ravens that sit on top of it um okay yeah let me move you over And we're running close to low on time, so I'll let you guys decide if you want to quit here uh, or continue. Oh, uh, what's everyone feeling? Probably just end here if we're going to be out of time. Yeah, I don't think you're going to get any more meaningful. Whole session next time we play. Yeah, you have a whole yeah. session to, to uh, continue on your way. Let me go ahead and... and so are we playing Candlekeep next week? Probably depends on if people are here or not. Yeah. That's a good point. And you can see over this direction. Well, whether we continue this adventure or not, I think I'm definitely in on this. <laughs> you like this? <laughs> uh, this has I been... Definitely uh... got to get a little more into it, but yeah, no, this is definitely fun. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Fun. Yeah, man, it's totally fun all the time, dude. <laughs> Good to have you here. Now, th now the party is going to try to convince you to play a cleric and play with them in their other campaign. <laughs> hey, hey, you, know, you never know. We need a healer. <laughs> uh, like hey, Olver does just fine. Okay, he can do hey, some of that. Yeah. He can strategize at work. Sure. And... He's not dead. Or he's the can... one that dies. When Olver's yeah, not right. dead or a creature, you can't cast spells when you're a little bee. <laughs> Anyways, you can you can see that there's a. You can see that there's apparently a graveyard off to one side of the house there. Um, yeah. I don't know. Stuff there. Try to reveal more of this so it makes more sense. Door there to the entrance. I didn't want to use dynamic lighting. Not for this. This this place would suck with dynamic lighting. Okay. Um, kind of give you an idea what you're dealing with there. 
It's actually, like I said, it's not that big of a house. Not really. Um, <clears throat> it's just tall. So, next week, uh, Will, what we're looking at is, you know, we, we tried to stick to our primary campaign uh, and then just take short, uh, we do these every, look, I don't know, we could, we could try to do this one sooner, definitely, than we did the last time we took a break. But uh, either that or, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe the party could be, you know, interested in letting you try the other campaign. I don't know. It's up to them, not me. So yes, but the I, mean, I don't want to throw a wrench into anything. But I mean, it's definitely already open. a shit show. So you have I to be able to. Have you. you have to be able to dedicate the time though for that other campaign. We that that one's pretty like a little more serious in making sure that we uh, adhere to. Um, that, that's why we're not playing it when people are gone. You know what I mean. And, and so if you're going to be a part of it, the only thing that I would say is that uh, you would need to understand that the other players aren't going to want to play without you, which means you have to have, you know, you have to dedicate time to it unless you have really good reasons for not being there. It becomes uh, kind of like the guy's poker night, I guess you might say in a way. Yeah, yeah. Like you can, you can, like you can dodge it, but... <laughs> My dad died, and I still played. Okay, so <laughs> is that that's dedication there? I mean, this is like the minimum bar. Okay, just so you know. <laughs> I, I I don't mean to make it sound too awful. I just mean you know we do try to not miss it. That's that's uh, yeah. but life definitely comes first. Just D and D's close second. <laughs> I see that it is two stories. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not. It, you already know it's two stories, and you know how these maps work. They throw them all on one page. Oh, I know. <laughs> oh, so I know. The the first floor is to the left of you, and then the uh, the one to the right of you is the second floor. So don't even that. That's technically open field. I thought it was three stories tall. Oh, there are. Okay. <laughs> the other one is uh is down here further here. See, I'll, I'll reveal yet another layer to the house <laughs> over here. <laughs> so yeah, there's that. Uh, and Specifically, then... what's on the roof? Because I feel like that's a floor for Lalo. I think you need to draw that out for me. What now? Nothing. The roof? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's just uh, a tile roof. Are there holes? Are there holes in it? There are. I guess I won't know. Oh, there are. Okay. Yeah. There are holes. I, I mentioned that earlier. Yep. Okay. I missed that. Oh, I might actually be able to use my feature. <laughs> you might be able to fly up there and fly in the holes. Through yep. one inch holes. Yep. <laughs> Just remember, if there's anything nasty in there, though, you're by yourself, <laughs> and I won't feel sorry for the pick for the fairy or the pixie. Hey, so I have a question for you. What? Uh, if I do that, is that considered an action? Do what? Like to like for invisibility to fly through a hole or to go through a hole? No, it's movement. Okay, so then hey, I could be invisible and do that. Yeah. That would be helpful. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. I I may rule that some of the some actions will cause you to become uh it all depends on it whether or not it could be considered an attack against a creature and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Casting a spell or attacking a creature in any way will drop invisibility. Okay, perfect. So anything that that would adversely affect a creature will generally drop your invisibility. But that's pretty much it. Uh, and we made it to about where I wanted to get tonight, which was right here uh, at the the thing. And I think um, we've got two more sessions worth of gameplay for this chapter of the Candlekeep Adventures. Really? Yep. Right. Oh, we didn't stretch this out. We, we need to spend more time at that wagon and to figure out what was up with that wagon. 
<laughs> the wagon is actually part. It's in the book that there's a wa- broken down wagon in the middle of it. I just thought it was ironic that your wagon got to the exact same spot and broke down. And the reason I had your wagon break down is because you know how many times in Scooby Doo the mystery machine breaks down. <laughs> So, let but me... it's usually breaking down right where the the mystery is.